Let's talk about Zeus or Jupiter's icy moon explorer which launched on the Ariane 5 spacecraft on the 14th of April 2023. This mission by ESA is supposed to reach Jupiter by July of 2031. So that is quite a long time that it will take to reach Jupiter and before it does it will do two Earth flybys, a Venus flyby, a lunar flyby and then finally a long long journey to Jupiter. Once it arrives at Jupiter, it will of course take a tour of the planet itself, followed by taking flybys around all its 35 IC moons. Finally, it will come to a close orbit near Ganymede where it will spend the rest of its time. And this will happen at about December of 2034 to 2035. Hello and welcome everyone to another brand new video. And in this video, we will chat about JUICE which is Jupiter's icy moon explorer, what are its objective, what are the science questions it's trying to answer, and most importantly, what are the interesting instruments that are present inside JUICE that will allow astronomers to study Jupiter along with its four icy moons. The main mission objectives of JUICE will be to sort of characterize Jupiter's icy moons, especially the ocean that is underneath the ice crust. It will mainly focus on three of its moons that is Ganymede, Europa and Callisto and sort of search if these planets can have possible habitats. Not only that, it will also explore Jupiter's complex system. The other question that this mission will try to understand is what about the other gas giants that are present in different solar systems? We can characterize the icy moons around Jupiter. We can draw a very good conclusion about the planets that are located in a different system and have a fairly good idea about the characteristics of its moons. Because again, all the three moons that I mentioned right now, that is Europa, Ganymede and Callisto are pretty special in its own aspect. A few key facts about the spacecraft itself, including in instruments would be, there will be 10 solar panels and a 2.5 meter long high gain antenna. Weight of the spacecraft, including its fuel, will be around six tons. So that is pretty hefty. Most importantly, JUICE will carry 10 state-of-the-art instruments instruments that will help us to probe the icy moons around Jupiter. And state-of-the-art instruments of JUICE can be categorized into three main categories. So first, we'll have a remote sensing package under which the main objective will be to sort of image the planet and get a spectral imaging of the planet at ultraviolet and submillimeter wavelengths. The, the second category of instruments would be basically the geophysical packet whose main goal would be to sort of characterize the planet geophysically, uh, probe its atmosphere and get a measure of their gravity fields. And finally, we'll have an in situ package whose main job would be to study the particle environment and the magnetic fields around uh, these planets. So under these ca categories, we have 10 instruments, as I said. So let's sort of go over the instruments one by one. First, let's uh, talk about 3GM or the gravity and geophysics of Jupiter and the Galilean moons. Quite an interesting acronym as always. And basically, this is a radio package that will comprise of the transponders, the stable oscillators or the timing references and a very highly accurate accelerometer. And again, the idea would be to study the gravity field of Ganymede and also get an idea of the internal oceans on the icy moon and the structure of the atmosphere and the ionosphere of Jupiter and its moon. So this particular instrument will be pretty key in actually characterizing Ganymede. The next instrument will be GALA or the Ganymede laser altimeter and its job will be to study the tidal deformations of Ganymede and also to map the surface of Ganymede and its icy moon. GALA will do is basically it will take multiple turns around Ganymede, try to make a 3D map of the moon itself. Next we'll have Janus and uh, which will basically be a part of the imaging package. It will be an optical camera system that will again study the regional and the local features of the moon as it does all the flybys and it will have a resolution of about 2.4 meter on Ganymede and about 10 kilometers at Jupiter. So finally after about 10 years we will have extremely high resolution data from all of these instruments which will really help us probe Jupiter and its moons. Next we'll have the JMAG which will be a part of the in-situ package 
whose job would be to study magnetosphere of Jupiter, uh, nanosphere of Ganymede, and also probe into the subsurface oceans of uh, the other icy moon. Next, we have Magus, which will again be a part of the imaging uh, package. Basically, this will be an imaging spectrometer and its job would be to specifically observe the clouds and the atmospheric constraints of Jupiter and then to sort of extrapolate all of the data uh, to study the icy moons and uh, the surfaces. Another super interesting package would be the PEP or the Particle Environment Package which will comprise of sensors which will help to characterize the plasma environment of Jupiter. We have seen before the bright netic interactions at the poles of Jupiter and that has baffled some astronomers for quite some time and this particular instrument will finally help us shed some light over those strong plasma activities. Uh, RIME or radar for icy moon exploration will basically be uh, ice penetrating radar. Ganymede itself is an extremely special moon just like Europa. Ganymede has an ocean world below its thick icy crust and this thick icy crust can extend up to 150 kilometers uh, below which we have an ocean world which is about 60 to 100 kilometers thick. So that's quite an interesting constituent of the moon itself. Uh, these ocean worlds are again about 10 times deeper than the oceans that we have on earth and since they are liquid in state it's it has been theorized for a long period of time that these ocean worlds below the thick crust can actually have some kind of life form if at all so rhyme would be an extremely key instrument which will have the penetrating part to sort of peer through all that ice through strong radio waves which can finally reach into the ocean world and all of these radio waves will sort of help us probe uh, the, in, uh, the water world inside Ganymede Finally, some of it will reflect back to the instrument itself where astronomers will analyze all of those data and get a better understanding of how those water walls are. Next, obviously, we have the RPWI or the Radio and Plasma Wave Investigation whose main job would be to characterize the radio emission and the plasma environment of Jupiter and its icy moon and it will of course use a, a, a suit of sensors and probes to achieve this. Uh, again, as I said, the last two packages will be the submillimeter wave instrument and the UV wave instrument. All of their goal would be to sort of study the atmosphere, the exhaust spheres of the moons and sort of investigate the composition of, of Jupiter's uh, upper atmosphere. Finally, what really interests me is JUICE will also carry some kind of VLBI in order to locate its position up to an accuracy of few micrometers per second. It will achieve so using something called planetary radio interferometer and Doppler experiment or PRIDE and this will basically use the EVLBI network or the European VLBI network to triangulate the position of the spacecraft to an extreme high accuracies which will be quite an interesting thing to sort of study. So this will be a short summary of JUICE and its capabilities and sort of what it is trying to achieve. So after about a decade from now, we'll have quite a good idea of Jupiter and its icy moons and finally be able to answer if there are simple life forms that below the thick ice crust in the water oceans of, of moons like Ganymede. And if by chance we find that something like this is truly the case, then it is for sure others, other moons around gas giants like Jupiter uh, in other solar systems will have some kind of similar life forms. So fundamentally, this is an extremely important mission and I hope you guys got a brief summary as to what this mission was all about. Again, if you learned something out of the video, I will highly encourage you to sort of subscribe to the channel and give a like so that this motivates me to keep pushing out more videos like this. As an instrumentalist myself, I'm really excited by all of the engineering that goes behind building all of the sophisticated instrument. I didn't go through all of the instruments with a lot of depth. If you really want to know more about this instrument, then please tell me which one of it was your favorite instrument and if you would like to know more and I'll happy to make another video about this. So with all that being said, I will end this video right now over here and catch you guys in the next one really soon. Thank you.